Hello guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for my rational perspective on Chelsea free Crystal Palace nil. Apologies for the delay in this review. I'm obviously covering the game yesterday for Football London in my new role and it was a very easy game to cover and work on and write about because Chelsea were simply brilliant. They were and I'm very excited to, to make a video today and speak about it and I'm sure you guys are excited to, to reflect on what was I think a perfect opening day for Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. You had a near capacity crowd at the bridge once again. The sun was shining. Chelsea dominated Crystal Palace from start to finish. Trevor Chalabar, I think, as you can see in the picture behind me, I think he is the highlight of the game. It was such an emotional moment personally for him and it was such a lovely moment to witness. Um, and I think a turning point potentially in Trevor Chalabar's career and sort of his prospect at Chelsea. We'll get into that. I think Chelsea needed to make a statement. They needed to make a fast start. I mean, I watched Man United absolutely blitz Leeds beforehand. And you just felt that Chelsea, with the fact that Liverpool went on to win quite comfortably at Norwich, of course, and Man City are playing at Spurs today. Chelsea want to be in a title race. And I do, listen, this is very reactionary, uh, first weekend of the season. But you just get a feeling that maybe this season, that top three or four may be a little bit further away from everyone else of the quality and investment those those four teams have um, and Chelsea really need to get going I think fast if we want to seriously compete for the Premier League title yes it's 37 games to go we know how quickly things can change at Chelsea and especially in the Premier League but I, I did think it was important that Chelsea got off to a fast start and Chelsea do have a lot of success against Crystal Palace um, even though it is that type of game that I feel Chelsea need to improve on this season we did go into this game uh, winning seven of the last uh, Premier League contests with Crystal Palace and we've made it eight wins in a row against them now I think the aggregate score against them last season in both games was 8-1 so it is a team that Chelsea have fared very well against um, but it's that kind of game where Chelsea do stumble at times um, but I felt that the intensity the pressing in particular we've seen it I think go up a notch in pre-season but we haven't been able to maintain it for whatever reason especially in the Spurs and Villarreal game but I think that in this game in particular we really pressed Crystal Palace back um, it just felt from from the word go even though Chelsea were, were missing of course in Golo Kante with an injury um, which was a big blow it really was and you know we need him fit and I think we can get into more discussion about the central midfield area but um, both Kovacic and Jorginho I think handled the game so well it was the kind of game that they thrived in in particular Jorginho back from the Euros I thought was brilliant he really was um, he's not a man of the match I think I have to give that to Trev Trevor Chalabar but I think Jorginho just got back in there and got back to what he was doing last season um, and it's a big season for him personally he's had an amazing 2021 in particular an amazing personal summer for him but it was just that metronome someone who is dictating play the the way Jorginho does his role best and it just felt very comfortable for him to slot back in get a full 90 minutes under his belt after going all the way at the Euros I'm sure that pleased Thomas Tuchel and yeah I, I I just there was a little bit of concern in those opening minutes to Chelsea had so much possession but just maybe that threat in the final third there was a few brilliant crosses going in from Mason Mount who like Jorginho was back to his best levels yesterday starting the game and playing the whole game as well um, a brilliant ball in that you just feel like Lukaku is going to gobble up but in an in attacking sense just yesterday Chelsea did not miss Romelu Lukaku and that's a good thing you know I I, I did concern with all the uh, clamour to see Lukaku come in that I think it was imperative that the team that was there the quality players we have step up and take their opportunities because once Rom comes in um, the chances in that especially front three are going to be limited he is absolutely going to dominate the, the forward line you think for Chelsea so it's it's massive for those players around Lukaku or at least the other attackers to take their opportunities when they get it and I think in particular Christian Pulisic great to see him score once again against Crystal Palace love scoring against Palace five Premier League goals against them I don't know what Palace did to Pulisic in a previous life maybe to annoy him but he loved scoring against them and I think it was it was a scrappy goal it was the worst goal on the day of, of the three but once again you saw from Christian Pulisic that anticipation he has to get in the box um, he just has that knack and I think that's what always has given me hope that Pulisic can be a very devastating player for Chelsea it's just all about that fitness and consistency over this season he needs to have uh, sort of a free season in terms of his health you know in terms of, he can't have another season where he's getting injured being out for weeks and weeks and weeks with the competition so fierce in this squad um, I think it's big for him that he started the season so positively and that's big for Pulisic of course I, I is the pick of the day I think Marcus Alonso's free kick is the pick of the day I mean Alonso just 
He has a knack for scoring memorable goals. Um, I think I saw a stat where Marcus Alonso, since he joined Chelsea in 1617, I don't know if this is Premier League specific. I'll try and get it up on the screen. I think no player has scored more uh, direct free kicks. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's just Premier League specific, but it's not that surprising because when we won that free kick, good work by Mason Mount on the right, um, it's Marcus Alonso territory and Guaita had no chance in goal. Um, just a thing of beauty. And Alonso, I think, proving once again that Tuchel... He has a squad and it's a squad game and Tuchel is going to rotate. I, even if Chelsea uh, find a consistent, I think, bunch of starters that you suspect, I think Tuchel knows how to rotate pretty smartly and shrewdly. And he's the type of coach a bit like Guardiola that I think will rotate game by game. I think he needs to because of the amount of games Chelsea have. Um, but he's got a big squad to please. And um, I think that's something Chelsea fans have to get used to. He may not have a best 11 like Jose Mourinho or Antonio Conte did. I think there will be 9 or 10 starters like we saw at the back end of last season. But I think every now and then he will throw a few surprise, I think, elements in there. And that's, that's the good thing about Tuchel I think he, he's able to spot when you can bring players in when you can bring players out and it was good that Marcus Alonso has been able to step up in recent games as Ben Chirwell returned late from the Euro so I think that Marcus Alonso uh, really good to see him thrive it was the game for him he didn't have to do a lot of defending he was able to stay up the pitch basically as a left winger which suits him in his favorite role um, and of course let's get to Trevor Chalabar who brilliant once again I think his all-round game he has been the standout player from pre-season I know we said Hakim Ziyech I think him and I think him Callum Atanadoy who didn't feature at all yesterday and Chalabar have been the three standout players and um, I think this is a turning point for Trevor Chalabar the goal itself is is brilliant it really is and we lack players from that sort of area who are able to really challenge the keeper you know long range shots that's something Chelsea I think need to get a little bit better at maybe just to add a different element and I think what you saw from Chalabar there that obviously he's played in midfield he knows how to play in central midfield um, but there is that versatility to his game so he has no problems advancing up the field as a right centre back and I think that's what hopefully will impress Thomas Tuchel more that he's got that versatility in Chalabar to maybe play him as a midfield option but also in games where Chelsea are a little bit more dominant maybe need that extra attacking force Chalabar is, is more than capable and comfortable and has the mobility to get back to to really press up and advance the, uh, up the pitch which we saw and, and I've seen several times over this preseason. we saw it late on against Villarreal uh, on Wednesday uh, so it was a brilliant strike the way he collapsed on his knees you can see the emotion there's been a picture doing the rounds of him and Mason Mount uh, looking at Lionel Messi I think in the Champions League semi-final when they when they were ball boys at Stamford Bridge I mean the story there it's a narrative that we have become used to at Chelsea in recent seasons you know players who have been here for all their lives basically a majority of their lives breaking into the first team and getting those opportunities. And, you know, I don't want to make this Jules Kunde versus Trevor Chalaba. There could be a scenario where Kurt Zuma still leaves the club who didn't play yesterday. Um, and, you know, we keep Trevor Chalaba and we buy Jules Kunde as well because that centre-back situation needs sorting out. But I just think now Ch Chalaba has done all he can to impress Thomas Tuchel. Um, I, I don't really think there's anything else he could have done. Um, the fact that Tuchel has given him that shirt and given him that chance in both the Villarreal and uh, game against Crystal Palace, I think says a lot about the confidence he has. And I also think that Chalabar, apart from all of the, I think, composure he has, the confidence, the comfort he has in a Chelsea team, it's also another example of a player going on loan, having a lot of minutes in their legs as a young player and coming back to Chelsea and having that experience. You know, even if he goes to Lorient last season and maybe it's not a standout loan, it's not a glamour loan. But I do feel a bit like how Reese James had it at Wigan, you know, in a relegation sort of threatened Wigan side. We oh, have yeah, it with Mason Mount playing at Derby, playing at Vitesse, Tammy Abraham playing at Bristol, uh, Swansea and, and Aston Villa. Experiences, you know, those experiences of playing in different clubs, different cultures, just consistent minutes week in, week out. And I think that's what's going to really benefit the likes of Billy Gilmore, if he, even if he is in a relegation battle this season. I think it, it really develops players, just those consistent minutes that you need as, as a young player. And you can see how Chalabar, throughout those loans he's had over the years at the likes of Huddersfield as well, ha has come back to Chelsea and more rounded player and he's ready to play senior football um, so I really hope that Chalaba stays actually this season um, if he is going to get more minutes than just coming on for the like the last 10 minutes of games or just the Carabao Cup or the last you know game in the Champions League group stage I hope he can be a lot more than that and if Chelsea can't get a deal for Jules Koundé this season I think it'd be really nice to see Trevor Chalaba take that role so exciting to see Trevor 
really thrived this preseason and great to see Tuchel give him that opportunity once again giving a young player the opportunity to to impress and he has and you cannot say whether a player is good or or bad or not good enough to play for Chelsea until you give him that opportunity as has been a lesson over recent years so let's hope this can be a really big season for Trevor Chalaba personally um, I'm sure you've seen the Mason Mount video that I think was sent to Trevor a few years ago uh, when Mason broke into the first team really exciting to see so let's hope he has a big season but overall it was it was the best day for Chelsea it was I, I don't think it could have gone much better in terms of uh, getting some of those players who, who've been late returnees I know they're having a training game at Cobham today or a friendly just to get more of those players I think the likes of Thiago Silva Ben Chirwell probably Rhys James who came on late just those late returnees some more minutes but you know you've seen Christensen Aspilicueta Jorginho Mason Mount they've all come back into the team now um, so we've got a week now probably over a week now to, to prepare for Arsenal next Sunday uh, which is another big game for Chelsea it really is it's, it's a tough start to the season you know Arsenal away I know obviously jokes aside but we know Arsenal are probably going to turn up at the Emirates as they have they, they have a knack of turning up against Chelsea in recent years so Chelsea needs to be prepared for that the return of Romelu Lukaku to bring into the team that's what's so exciting there's so many options for Thomas Tuchel to play with so I loved it. I enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. Let's hope it's the start of a really, really good season for Chelsea in the Premier League. Let me know your thoughts. Your man of the match. My man of the match is going to be Trevor Chalabar. What a finish. What a debut. A Premier League debut for him as well after making his full competitive debut for the club. Let's hope this is the start of a magical season personally for him and a really good season for Thomas Tuchel's Champions of Europe. Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea. Uh, look at my work on, on Football London. Links will be in the description box below. Subscribe, notification bell, and I'll see you again. Have a great day.